Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to discuss people using cheap prices on their products and services to try and attract more customers. Why do I have a problem with cheap prices for products and services trying to attract customers? Though it is a short-term option to bring in new customers and um, introduce your services to customers, it is not sustainable if you are undercutting your, all your competitors with cheap prices, especially if you stretch it out over a very long period or you get to the mindset that this is the only way to get customers and you keep your prices as low as you can and every time you see someone else bring their price down you bring your price down further undercutting now in our current worldwide situation where a lot of the countries have just exited severe lockdowns and we all are trying to get our businesses back on track, back to a sustainable level of economy, a lot of people are undercutting each other, coming up with ridiculous prices for products and services, prices which are not sustainable. I'm going to be using the photography industry as an example, but you can apply this mindset or my ideas, my opinion, which is not necessarily correct, but it, it, it's my opinion, what I think. You can apply to virtually any industry. Now, it's true that a lot of young photographers have to start somewhere, and they feel that their photography is not yet at the standard of other photographers, etc., and they come in at very low prices. I've seen photographers in my area come up with prices as low as 50 Rand for a photo shoot, which uh, is completely ridiculous. But because even as young starting photographers, I think a young photographer can come in at 200 Rand. That is absolute, absolute minimum. But use that only as an introduction after you've done a couple of free shoots, everyone does free shoots just in the beginning just to introduce yourself to the market. But once you start charging a price, be fair, look at what the rest of the market is doing and target that. Because you have to think of sustainability. If photography is your passion and you want to make a living from it, I've been doing it for many, many years. Contact me and we can discuss it. Um, but if, even if you're a weekend photographer, your camera has a value. And as soon as you start earning an income from it, it becomes a tool, a working piece of machinery, which has an expected um, life, and it is going to die on you sooner or later. Not a question of if, when. Um, so it's going to die. And especially when it comes to consumer grade equipment, your professional photographers buy high end cameras for various reasons. Usually quality of image. Yes, it does have a better quality of image, lower light capability and a lot of functions you can, and options you can change, battery life and durability, especially. And, uh, if you are using a little consumer camera, which maybe you paid 6,000 Rand for, and you are charging only 200 Rand a photo shoot, how many photo shoots do you need to do just to get to the value of that camera? You have to put that completely one side in order to be able to replace your camera with exactly the same camera. Not even thinking about upgrading, just replacing. And believe you me, if you are a weekend photographer starting out with a cheap 6,000 Rand camera, you are going to be replacing that camera within a year. It will die within a year. If you do um, 
100 photos every weekend, your camera will die within the next year. Consumer cameras are not designed for heavy work. And especially when you start doing a thousand photos in a weekend, six months for a consumer camera is going to become a lucky, a lucky lot. So that is just on the camera. What about upgrading? What about adding new equipment? Flashes, off-camera flashes, off-camera lighting, tripods, all these pieces of equipment. If you want to become a sustainable photographer and you want to enter the professional arena, you are going to need equipment. So you have to push your prices a little up, save a little more. And if you're lucky, you still stay with mom and dad. Or if you're a weekend photography mom, maybe you have a husband that uh, can sustain your business for you. And you can save a lot of money to get, get that equipment. But remember, when, let's say you start uh, photography with a studio. Your studio equipment has an expected life. It is not something you buy and now it's going to work for the rest of your life. Globes, studio uh, photography globes, those strobes, they go, they, they pop and they're pretty expensive. And what if you have four of those globes? So think about little things like that. Yes, we need all need to start somewhere with low prices, but you have to bring it up. Otherwise, what happens? And this is the most common theme when it comes to young, young photographers who appear and two, three years later, they're gone with the wind. Because they never expected their business to grow and never expected their equipment to fail. Equipment failure is the largest reason for young photographers stopping, or anyone for that matter. Because now you have a camera that failed, you have strobes that failed, and you can't afford to replace them because your prices are too cheap. What is a good price? That's difficult for me to tell you. You have to decide. But if you're using cheap prices in order to bring in customers, all you're doing is bringing in more customers and you are working harder your equipment is working harder, which means your equipment is going to fail a lot quicker. The first thing you need to reckon in is how much is your time worth and how much is your equipment worth? Divide that all up. Calculate the cost of your equipment, the insurance, etc. Cost of fuel to get to the various photo shoots and what your time is worth editing the photos that you are giving your customer. And then you will get to a rate. Believe me, and it's not going to be 200 Rand. I believe young photographers who are pretty okay and have a fairly decent camera, uh, a little higher end than the 6,000 Rand cameras that uh, I've seen around, I would say a 10, maybe 12,000 Rand basic camera, they should be charging at least 500 Rand. Or if they are not currently charging 500 Rand an hour for a photo shoot, they should very quickly work towards that point. I charge 1,200 Rand, which sounds like a lot of money. Yes, I do have options for 600 Rand, but those options are for the people that only want a couple of photos edited. That's pretty much a quick shoot. They don't want a lot. But if you want a couple shoot, you want a matric farewell, you want a decent hour long shoot, and I charge 1,200 Rand. I know there's a lot of other people that actually charge a lot more. But in my area, it's already a lot of money. And I cannot really charge that much more because our local economy just isn't going to be able to get to that. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I can sustain my photography business with that. To be honest, four years ago, I lost everything. I didn't have anything to work with. I had to borrow money to go buy a camera again after everything got stolen and no, no insurance uh, paid anything out. And I'm sitting again in a position where I own four full frame cameras, not to brag, but it's purely by investing in my equipment with the money from the shoots that I get so I can give my customer the best. And my customers know that. 
my customers come to me and they don't ask for, for discounts. I send them a price list. They know what they're going to get. They, I give them the absolute best. And that's the rate they accept. Why? Because I have experience and I have the equipment and I have the backup. So if you're charging a low rate for what you are doing in order to try and, and attract customers, it's the wrong strategy. Short term maybe, a month of specials to try and get your business going. But after that, you have to seriously evaluate how much you are charging and whether your mindset is the lower I charge, the more customers I'm getting. Because if it's that mindset, it's wrong. Low prices bring in customers, but you and your equipment's going to be working harder. Your equipment is going to fail a lot quicker. Can you and your business survive equipment failure at low prices? I think not. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.